Now you put in your Opus token. Oh, uh, right. That's that's not an Opus token. But that's it's a it's a meep. That's but that's it's, like a, but Greg, I'm supposed to know that it's you by your Opus token, and that's not an Opus token. Well, how are you supposed to? What's the point of the robes if you're supposed to know that it's me? <laughs> hi, everybody. Oh, hi. <laughs> Welcome to Board Game Bistro. Uh, this week we are serving up Illimat. Or trying to. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome back to the Board Game Bistro. As you just saw, today we're exploring the secret society of luminaries and the card game that unites them, Illimat. Illimat combines classic ingredients with a very unique feel and look to create something that is completely its own. Perfect for two to four players, uh, served up at your next cocktail party or secret society gathering. That's right. So let's jump into the ingredients. Illimat is served up on a perfect, beautiful uh, cloth that can be washed and unlike all other board games, if you happen to spill your cocktail on it, it's not the end of the world. That is quite an advantage. Uh, I actually ironed it today. Um, and it also comes with awesome little beads for tracking your score. Also featured are several Ocus tokens. Each of these represents one of the players, and in the lore of the Society of Luminaries, each Ocus token would represent a particular player, would be unique to them, and really capture their essence within the game. Next up, we have the game cards, which uh, there are five suits, 13 cards in each suit, going from two to the Fool, which is either 14 or one, depending on what the active player says it is. Each of the suits does slightly different things. You have Spring and Autumn, which are sort of generic suits, Summer, which can give you extra points, and is shown here in orange, and Winter, shown here in blue, which can actually give you negative points. Face cards are also special as they interact with some of the other components in the game. There's also the stars suit, which isn't used in a game with fewer than four players. Next, we have luminary cards. These are placed on the corners of the game mat. Um, each luminary card has unique effects that can change what's going on in the gameplay. And you wouldn't see these. We're just sharing you sharing with you some little, little secrets. Little secret information <laughs> just for you. And finally, because we don't want any of the ingredients to go to waste, we have this, the Illimat in the center, which is actually the bottom of the box. So what you're gonna do, open that up, take everything out, set it up, and then flip it over, and bam, right here you have the Illimat. On the Illimat, you have each of the four seasons, spring, summer, autumn, and winter, which have different gameplay effects and determine which actions you can and can't perform in any given quadrant of the board. Very efficient, using all of the pieces. And that's the ingredients. Great, and now we're ready to prepare our recipe. Uh, Elamat, first to start out to prepare your recipe, you're gonna want to lay out the uh, game mat. Uh, the ironing part is optional. Uh, then you will deal cards randomly, uh, three into each field, and place the Illimat in the center, and then each player will place their Ocus token on top of the Illimat. After that, you'll deal one Luminary randomly into each corner. There are eight total. You'll only play with four in any given game. Give each player a scoring token, which goes in their corner of the board, a reminder card, and four suited cards. Once that's done, you're ready to play. Secret robes, not necessary. And that brings us to the meat of the recipe, which is of course the gameplay. On your turn, you can take one of three actions. The first of those is to sew, which is S-O-W, not S-E-W. And of course she would know, she's the expert. Um, and I'm going to sew into the winter field here by placing a seven. Don't forget to draw. Oh yes. On the end of your turn, you draw back up to four cards. The second type of action is to harvest, which is where you play one card from your hand, in this case, a 13, the King of Summer, and take cards from a field that match the face value of that card. So I'm taking the King of Spring. Now, face cards have an additional effect. They rotate the element so that the season facing the field that you just played into matches the suit of the card that you just played, in this case, Summer. Perfect. 
Now, since winter has moved over here and this field is autumn, I can use my seven to harvest all of the sevens. This highlights the danger of playing face cards and moving the yellow mat. And then I can draw back up to three. Which Four. I forgot to do. It happens. It does. The final type of action that you can take is to stockpile, which I'm going to do now. You take a card from your hand and you place it into a field, but instead of placing it on its own, you combine it with another card. So now this four and this five aren't treated as a four and a five, they're treated as a nine for the purposes of harvesting. Then I draw up, Perfect. as I remembered this time. Um, I'm just going to illustrate one additional way to sow cards, which is, or sorry, harvest cards, which is to um, use an 11 to harvest both the two and the nine because they total 11, and I can put those here, which actually clears this field and flips the luminary. In this corner, we have the maiden. Each of the luminaries have different powers they exert over the field. In this case, the maiden actually um, negates the winter power, so you can harvest in the winter field while the, while the maiden is on the table. Very useful. And of course, each luminary has different effects and they're randomized at the beginning of the game. And then I have to draw back up to four. Oh. And because I picked up all of the cards in the field, I get to choose my Ocus token. Finally, once a field is cleared, it is what's known as reseeded, where you take three cards off the top of the deck, deal them back out into the field, so that we can then interact with those cards. If on future turns you were to clear this field again, as Leslie has just done, there's obviously no face down luminary for you to flip. So instead, you take the face up luminary and move it into your scoring area where it will give you points at the end of the game. Also, if you clear this field and there's no face down luminary, you don't reseed. Instead, the only way for you to add cards into that field is to sow them from your hand. And there you go. That's a look at how to cook. And finally, we get to the most delicious part of any game, tasting, aka scoring. In Illumat, at the end of each round, there are several separate scoring conditions that are checked independently. The first of these is called Bumper Crop, and it gets four points to whoever has the most cards. So how many did you end up with? 29. Okay, well I had 17, so you score that one handily. Four points to Leslie. Perfect. Next up is Sunkissed, so the person with the most summer cards will get two points. I have nine. Oh, I only have four, so you score that one too. Great. And then, next up. Frostbit. Frostbit is actually negative points, negative two points, to whoever has the most winter cards. I have four. What about you? So that's also me. Scoring condition met. Negative points though, so I dodged a bullet on that one. All right, so next up, I have to count all of my luminary cards, my Ocus tokens, and my full cards. So that's one, two, three, four, and five. And I do the same for one, two, three. Which brings us to a final score for the round of three to nine. Perfect. Gameplay continues until one player reaches 17 points. Each round, as you can see, scores a variable number of points, and it's possible to go up one round and down the next if you just get really unlucky. But overall, the game takes about two to three rounds, 15 to 45 minutes, depending on how long your rounds last and how many players you have. Well, there you have it. That is uh, a look at Illimat, a timeless classic. If you're familiar with Bridge, Gin, Hearts, this game will feel very familiar, but yet completely different like than anything else you've ever tried before. It is a very delightful game, and if you like what you saw, definitely pick it up. They also have an expansion out, the Crane Wife expansion, that adds some new game modes, new luminaries, and just all around interesting options for gameplay. Thank you for joining us at the Board Game Bistro, and we hope to see you next time. Don't forget, board games are an important part of a balanced diet.